I'm not recording this conversation. Well, okay. I just want to know. I mean, for, for the, you know, for the benefit of the public, who wants to know what the process of proceeding of this, this uh, meeting is <laughs> for those, for those who <laughs> want to know, we are not now uh, audio recording, uh, video recording. Uh, if you can do that with your uh, cell phone, feel free to. Uh, Tom Herb has volunteered to take pictures of what's going on here and share them with us. Um, it sort of is a scary place and in 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 an opportunity that, that we have at this point. Uh, there is the blog, there's YouTube. Feel free. <laughs> feel, feel free to record what's going on here if you don't feel it's being adequately recorded. The way we are recording it is I'm taking notes on the questions that you've asked me and the comments you're making. Uh, I'm going to record all those and post them on the web at our site. Uh, we're about to launch into an exercise where you, want, you using this very high-tech medium, are going to record your comments, questions, suggestions. Uh, uh, so uh, I, what I'd like you to do now is, if you, if you don't have one of these, how is standing by with extra pads to hand out to people who don't have them. He's also got a choice selection of very cheap pens that he's willing to share with you. And I'd like you to take uh, 10 minutes or so to write down any questions, comments, or suggestions you have about the 1997 plan, the proposed changes to the plan that we put before you, or any other changes or revisions that you would like to plan. So please let's take about 10 minutes here and post them on the web at our site. Uh, we're about to launch into an exercise where you, using this very high-tech medium, are going to record your comments, questions, suggestions. Uh, uh, so uh, I, what I'd like you to do now is, if you, if you don't have one of these, Al is standing by with extra pads to hand out to people who don't have them. He's also got a choice selection of very cheap pens that he's willing to share with you. And I'd like you to take uh, 10 minutes or so to write down any questions, comments, or suggestions you have about the 1997 plan, the proposed changes to the plan that we put before you, or any other changes or revisions that you would like to plan. So please let's take about 10 minutes here and uh, record any, any questions. What we're going to do, uh, I would say, if you might want to follow up, it's fine to put your name and contact information, or you know, some way of, at least your name, on, on the thing, but it's definitely not required. Uh, we are going to post them on these uh, newsprint sheets that we have here so that you can look at them at, at the end of each one of the exercises. We are going to take those comments and transpose them and post them anonymously on the web so that everybody can go to the web and see what comments we receive. And eventually we will be, for each one of the comments, we will be providing what the department's response is. So please take some time here and jot down any questions you have about the plan, any comments you have about the plan or the proposed changes, or any suggestions you have, either about how you would modify the changes or other changes that you would make to the plan.
page 12 of the PowerPoint presentation, the listing of uh, the result of the review conclusions that we've come to as a result of our discussions with the community and uh, analysis and research. So what I'd like to ask you to do now is once again take uh, the poster pads and spend uh, 10 minutes or so filling those out, listing any questions you have about those findings, uh, any comments that you have about how well the department or the city or the state or the federal government for that matter has carried out the vision for EVA and any suggestions you have about ways in which you think implementation, making the vision come true for EVA, how we can improve our success in making the vision come true. So please save 10 to 15 minutes to fill out uh, the comment sheets. <laughs>
study shows. Uh, my response, I think we've got to focus on, on the permitting process. Number one, I think uh, uh, the review of uh, uh, requests for permits, downsizing, upsizing, unilateral agreements, these are the things we've got, we've got to look at. Right now, at the moment, when you have a master plan and, and developer says, we want to make a change within that development plan, that master plan, I will, I will, I will say no. Because there's a lot of revisions that they make in their master plan. Does it really full, does it come back for public review? So I think it's critical that we look at things. Look at things. How how, how developers uh, focus their master plans on and, and, and look at that when they when they start uh, making changes, permitting changes, downsizing, uh, unilateral agreements. These are the things that make, make uh, uh, development rampant in this area. Uh, and I, I think, uh, like Keone says, I think we gotta move that urban growth boundaries to Makai. Because one of the things is agricultural lands. Right now they got the, they got the whole PD development, which is Makai, Makai of, uh, of H1. And that should be prime ag lands, as the state did put it, Put it in a land bank. Those acreage, nobody knows it, but I do. When 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 Caetano was governor, he put those acres because those are number one A lands that should be put in in, in <coughs> preservation. Uh, I think it's priority that we take up care of ag lands and things like that. So the process on how government issues permits, I think that's critical to help development. In our, in our sites, it's going to be conducted throughout the Everglades. How much rapid and uncontrolled development you got because there's no control. There's no control about the process on how government issues permits, especially the, the, the city planning and permit. Well, I am Tom Burke, Evan Inwood Board, antecedents to this matter for implementation. Evan Inwood Board, two years ago, took a position at a legislative committee meeting that I have facilitated to provide for what the state constitution prohibits. Our state constitution does not allow for special purpose revenue bonds to be issued to the private developer. Thereby, what we've been seeing for decades is that the developer has to build the homes first, generate capital, to then put in the infrastructure. If you want to reverse that, that would be implemented in revising and amending our state constitution. A bill was introduced two years ago to the state legislature, and our legislators won't hear it. They won't entertain it. They're not going to listen. So special purpose revenue bonds would provide for it in the state constitution, whereby they'd be issued to the developer, whereby they would have the capital up front to build the roads, provide the infrastructure for the schools first, not after the fact. So if you want change, think of the con, -con folks. Thank you. Any comments? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm referring to the status report here, page five, as to the uh, findings that you came up with. Uh, point two said that um, the protein agriculture uses as long as possible and the purpose was achieved. What do we mean by as long as possible? I'm still something none of us has to pay this is it, but I'm taking over the land or is with a time limit on it? Yeah. There was a time limit on it? And what was the time limit? Uh, if you look over here on the phasing maps, um, 97, the uh, first phase was immediate, 90, starting in 97. The second phase was 2006 to 2015. The third phase was 2016 and beyond. Well, I see what the is I This is all outside their growth boundary, protected for the foreseeable future, 50 years plus. No, no uh, applications for residential use are permitted, and that's retained in, in uh, this one. Okay, if I may also use the uh, point in uh, paragraph 3 here. Uh, all since you phased out, uh, we phased out phasing period, all undeveloped 
highest level of the development growth fund, we are now seeking land use approval. Uh, I would interpret that as developers going through the permit process. Right. Because it is my understanding that we have already about 23,000 permits more or less granted in the area in. Yes, there's a table 2.1, I believe, in in the document that shows the entitlements, uh, shows who has a land use commission approval, who has zoning, and who needs land use commission approval and, and zoning. So, may I ask why the phasing was eliminated? Uh, the phasing is only phased because you want to see the impact of phase one. And you might want to make changes in further, in further development, but in this case, since it's all out, we're being faced with the choices of all nothing. There is no area, there's no time to explore really the impact of a particular phase. But I'm saying that on purpose, because this is going to be okay, we're looking at the development of the center uh, in the village, which we're trying to explore the possibility of mixed use and then eventually transport that into the northwest corner. That is phasing. But if we would let that go on at once and say, fine, you know, you tell me what you want to do, and then you just close the door, that doesn't make sense to me. So whose brilliant idea was this to phase out, phase it? Because it eliminates community input. No, it doesn't. But after the phasing is out and the original phase has been established, then where does my voice come in, even if we see shortcomings in the current development? Your voice comes in at the zoning approval stage. You have the opportunity to express your opinion and put your testimony in front of the planning commission and the councils about infrastructure impacts. You'll have that opportunity with regard to Hope Peely, which is going to the land use commission and, and the council. Uh, I, you know, HCDA which has the ability to exempt itself from our plan and zoning, does have a board, and they do take testimony. And I guess you can provide testimony to the legislature and the governor with regard to HCDA's decision. The HHL, which has the power to exempt themselves from this plan, I guess you have the opportunity to provide testimony to the governor with regard to what the HHL does. As the fact that we're taking the phasing off these maps doesn't take those rights away. And in fact, the phasing is, we're into the second phasing, and the third, the third phase is just over the horizon in terms of development opportunities. And the urban growth boundary was drawn to say, here's the extent to which development would happen. Now, people may have entitlements, uh, but that doesn't mean that the development is going to happen everywhere instantly. That's all dependent on the market. The other, the other point to make about that is that through the process of subdivision, at the time of subdivision, the department does require that transportation plans be up to date and reflect uh, existing, you know, what existing capacity demands are. It does require that water be available. You don't get your subdivision or water supply was certified water adequate for drinking and adequate for fire supply. You're not going to get your subdivision if wastewater says we don't have sewer capacity, etc. Says so there is a check in the subdivision process. And Glenn is exactly right that uh, for those people who have entitlements now to make sure that the vision happens, we need to do and, and fairly quickly we need to do changes of the rules at the subdivision and in the land use ordinance to make sure that as these projects are developed, they are developed in consistent with what the vision calls with regard to connectivity, with regard to the walk, the place, a whole host of those things. We need to quickly move and make sure that the regulations are there. And, and assuming that the vote supports transit in November, then we need to move quickly and set up the, the rules so that development around those stations is consistent with transit use. I, I'm sorry, you obviously pushed a button in line. Uh, I, 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 I don't want to get into a back and forth on this. I really want to hear what you have to say and go away and think about it. When I looked at these comments that are up there, I'm very impressed.
it's, it's, it's very useful for me. Now I have to go away and think about all these questions you pose to me and come on back with an answer. And then when I come back with an answer, you, know, you can come back at me again and we'll have a dialogue on, on these points. But thank you for your, your hard questions. They're the ones that make it, that help us make the plan better. Senator. I'm going to develop the rule of that. Dennis, oh, I'm sorry. Sir, I'm a public safety standpoint. I'm a public safety standpoint. We ask for being support for the land and fire stations. As described on page 4 that is 36. Mainly, Ocean Point, Evo Villages, Colina. Thank you. I'm going to start with the parts of the document. Uh, the uh, evaluation of some of the video layouts are often not supporting blocking plates, etc. So, uh, one implementation could be to update the subdivision rules and regulations to implement more uh, new urbanized concepts. The subdivision within the break could be the most conventional subdivision. So, thank you. Yes, go ahead. Well, <clears throat> I don't know if this applies to this exactly, but in my experience in this type of field issue, uh, I've been talking to many people from, from Washington, D.C., and uh, city and state agencies. Uh, I was amazed to find out uh, how the, what is the entity that has been set up for how the Navy operates under these public private ventures, I believe has been hugely misused uh, from what I've researched on the mainland how they're used. They're much more closely supervised. In other words, the uh, Navy essentially has, and maybe with DHL and everybody else is doing, I don't know, HCBA, but they pretty much exempt themselves wholly from all uh, zoning regulations and whatever. So in other words, for every field, they want to they can go in there and build anything they want and not really have to consult with anybody. And I'm wondering, since there's such a huge 900 pound gorilla out here of land owning and the Navy region of Hawaii, which has to be understood is not the flag maybe of, of aircraft carriers and submarines, it's a real estate operation. There are huge real estate operations. People don't seem to fully understand that they have their own agenda as a real estate company, just like any other big real estate company, and they're operating totally above the law or outside the law. And um, and I, I I'm from a military family. I and I love the military, and and I'm some nice people over there. I talked to a number of them, some really good people there. But I think this public private venture concept has gotten out of control, and it's like the equivalent of the stock market with. Uh, these financial instruments, it's gotten to a point where nobody really understands what's going on. Even the people over there don't understand what's going on. And it's getting out of control, and um, on the mainland, there's much better supervision of this than any of the BRAC processes and any of the transfers that have happened. It's one of the reasons why I think this area has, has such a ugly BRAC transfer process, in my opinion, is because that no one's really knowing what's going on. I, and I have talked to everybody. It's amazing how many people and all the agencies that are supposed to know what's going on do not know what's going on, and nobody clearly understands this process at all. And I think there's something wrong about that. And uh, so again, since there's such a huge influence landholder entity out here, then I don't even see the Navy here. They, they should be part of this process and uh, participate in this. And for your comments. Yes. I have a question about a comment that you made regarding subdivision, and I did put that comment up. Um, from a pra practical standpoint, um, a hypothetical, we've submitted a subdivision application, it's gone through the review process, we've made the changes, and then the DP gets approved. Um, at what point is our project grandfather in? Because we don't want to have to study. Right. Yeah. I, I, you know, once again, just, I want to get defensive for in an advocacy place, but I agree with the point. And we need to send clear signals well in advance of what changes are, are being. And I think the Evan Connectivity Study, in which we have been sharing that with people, is, is an indication of 
of how that process should work, David. Anything on implementation? Then uh, I'd like you, if you would, please take your comments and post them on the, on the board there.
yourself is kind of a do it yourself. Yeah, it's a just Yes, sir. My card? Excellent. Oh, good. Thanks, Bob. Tom explained that you're putting it on video. Yeah, yeah. That would be great if you could provide a link to it for us. Of course. Of course. We'll do. I'll let you know. Do you have a card that I can have? Not handy. I'm shooting right now. Oh, okay. But I'll, I'll follow up with you, of course.
to those things but you know people like to look at video it's almost like being there in case you're disabled or whatever so thank you though
but we're going to, to begin on, on sharing of, of, of comments. Comments on how the plan could be improved. Uh, in the, the changes that we've proposed or changes that you would propose or questions that you have about what's proposed or what's in the plan. And so what I'd like to do is uh, ask that um, those who want to share, if you would share the most important, the top question, comment, suggestion that you came up with on your list. And uh, we can start and we'll just go around the room. Uh, what you say? So, if, if you'd share what you, what was the what was your top comment that you wanted to share? The development plan. It needs to continue to look towards the future. All right, so we'll continue. I'm standing up. We can't hear. We can't hear. Okay. Sorry. Okay, the development plan overall always needs to look to the future. It will always continue to have changes. And you only list the history of the changes as a reference. Oh, and if you, if you could share who you are in any evaluation. Mike Beloy, you. Neighborhood 434. Okay, my uh, major talk in this plan um, encourage re uh, renewable energy and implementation. And I'm Michael Beloy, Jr. Of the process data so I was here from the beginning and as a reminder that this is the end of development plan and it's a living document and we should review it every two years because it moves all the time. And agreeing also on that we're doing it more quickly because of all the goals that we have. I mean, uh, you're, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, this is not the same. Who's that? Hello, I'm Susan A. from the board. I'm uh, following you. Uh, I've been looking over some of the pictures here, and I'm late to come to this. But nevertheless, uh, I'm wondering, with all the development, and I'm not anti-development, but I really would like to know what are we going to do about wastewater treatment? What are we going to do about this water situation, bottled water, when in this plan it speaks of the contingent upon um, desalinization and additional groundwater for the potential water? When do we say when on this because there's not enough water? We're dependent largely on Mother Nature. She's backed it up. So, this is sort of our problem. Uh, he only does the accumulated report. Uh, changing rural conditions, the economy, collapsing airlines, rising seas, they the imperative that we preserve our best farmlands. We may need them in the future. Both people will take precious A and D quality lands. The plan has out of date on this. The urban growth boundary must be changed to keep all present agricultural lands outside of the urban growth boundary. Thank you. Okay. I, think, I think we got to go back to, to the vision uh, of 97, which takes into consideration <coughs> the, uh, uh, creating a second city. That, that, that was a, the vision that we had when we set down in town, the vision that ever played. The creation of a second city. Which means a mode of transportation that shall be circulated within that second city. From Wapaho all the way to Kapo Bay, to UH. Uh, I, I think that vision has been lost. So we gotta come back to that basic vision of trying to create a modal system within the second city. And not and not go back to town. I mean it doesn't make any logical sense to move population from, from a second city concept. To, to, to back to town where the infusion of traffic and everything else, which means that, well, number one, government has to take the initiative of, of providing tax incentives and tax relief to businesses. 
If you want to move transportation and people out here, then we got to. We got to plan for a second city. And right now we're not doing it. We're all going to compete. We do not own any land. We do manage of the land. 
So when we go into our meetings, that is not what we talk about. We talk about the, um, the stakeholders who are there and what they're going to do in conjunction with the master plan of not just Kauai Law, which you can see online if you go to the HCA website, but how it, it pertains to this community. Then I'll let Evelyn talk about when we're commissioners, what we do when we're at these meetings. Well, um, as far as the ACDA is concerned, all over like land matters, we're the very entity that is telling those other parties, um, the IB, CHHL, that they must comply with the EPP permit. Um, whether or not that will happen remains to be seen, but it is ACDA's mission to have everybody comply with the EPP. And, and we as community people on that commission say that, that we represent the community that wants all the rules and regulations of the city um, rules to be followed. So we advocate for that to happen. We do not advocate for us to be, um, you know, a, law a lawless, um, shoot up of community. So I, we want to make that clear. Um, well, we're oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just when I jumped over, I thought she didn't have some. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. But basically, I want to thank everybody for coming out and participating in the workshop because I think everybody's input makes a difference. Makes a difference. And to hear the different viewpoints from different people is very important to get everybody's input into this. Uh, for my wrap up, I, I want to show you some graphics just before we uh, take off. Well, this is H1 Freeway, and this is Fort Weaver Road, and this is where Hobo PD is going to go. If you live in the area, you know the traffic jam on H1, you know the traffic jam on the Road. Where are these 12,000 homes going to dump their traffic? There, there, and it's all going to go. 12,000 will be in front of us who live here and those guys who live there. Okay? No one lives in here right now. But those guys are going to be in front of us going to town. Three out of four cars go to downtown. By the uh, Ever Development Plan says that in 20 years, still 60 cars out of every 100 will go to town for work. We've got to be really concerned about what's happening here, folks. Traffic is going to be just terrible. Let's look at traffic as it is right now. Existing, these are freeway traffic places. We have ACEB. In 2030, with the rail and without OOPV, everything will move to E's and F's. With OOPV, everything will move to mostly F's. This is going to work in the morning. This is coming along in the afternoon. This is taken from the whole PV book, the final EIS that they turned in. This is what we're going to face. We need to know that. We need to know, too, that we're taking our most valuable farmland. When we decided in the 70s that we were going to have a second city, we said we're going to put the second city out here. Instead, we took the valuable farmland of Ilani and built there. Then we said we're going to put the second city out here, and then we built Waipio, then we built uh, Village Park, then we built Royal Canea, then we built Waikele. All of these are our most valuable farmland. You can see the dark here. This is the farm that's out there right now. It's A and B land that's extremely precious, precious land. That's what we're giving up. You need to know that. When as, as time goes on, and we need our precious land, and we start looking for it, it's going to be all under homes. Know it, folks. That's what's coming. We've got to stand up against the whole people. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes. Thanks. Something because of the helmet. Yes. Well, again, sir, you only kind of summarized in, in, a, in a capsule. But, you know, as a closing, closing comment, I want to look at the whole area itself, 
for the last 25 years, I've been talking about impacts. I'm talking about traffic. I'm talking about development. And I, I want to answer the question that Brock posed that, yeah, everybody, you know, we can't, we can't keep it here because we've got to move in some other community. But let me tell you, if we don't do it right here, there's no other model that they can look at that is done correctly. We want to make sure that this project here, this Everglades is done correctly because we were the number one from all the islands, from all the state that developed, that developed the develop, development plans. We want to keep it that way. If everybody is on board about that. Number two, the thing that's hanging us up right now, other than what I spoke before about uh, reviewing the permitting process, number one, HCTAA. I don't think there should be a government agency or a government appointed agency that telling the people we're going to bypass the process. We're going to come out with the uh, with this project, with that project, we're gonna give the blessing to this project and that project. I don't think it's right. ACDA appointees, except the subcommittee, <laughs> BLF and Evelyn. Two members that sit on that committee. But the rest of them, what do they know about Adla? Nothing, nothing, they're not even from, they don't have an insight of what's going on in this area. They cannot make, they cannot make comments or cannot, cannot uh, Make revisions, but they make, they do they do make uh, final decisions on that. The other one is Hawaiian homeland. We cannot let a government agency. I native Hawaiian. How many of you are native Hawaiians in here, brother? You? We are native Hawaiian. Hawaiian homelands. To answer the sister's question, nobody else. There shouldn't be in a process of signing off on projects that are our purview to community oversight. Community oversight, that's number one. That we as a public should have oversight on whatever project comes about in this area. Hawaiian homeland should be taking care of Hawaii. Not facilitating development in this other region. That's a, that's a fundamental blockage in how the process is run. Mind you, brother, take that to heart. Hawaiian homeland should never, Michael Tani should never be in this process of telling me, another native Hawaiian, that we don't need an EIS on, on, on cultural sites and features. You don't have to tell me that. Because over here, I bought and raised in Napa. This was a traveling ground to all our Hawaiians that passed through here. And every project on this, this side of the island, including Eva, should come up with an EIS. They're going to determine projects in this area. So mind you again, if we don't do things right here, brother, why will not the no model to how things are, are should process throughout the, throughout the island? This, is a, this should be the model. From here to Waianae, Makaha, Kaena Point, all the way down. This level is why we're here. That's why this is a public discourse that shouldn't be taken lightly. Everything from the Maka to the sea should be preserved. We need a thought text. Hey, I'm not, I'm not opposed to development. As many of you know, and as Debbie and, and Nelson, I'm not opposed to but we got to do it right. We got an input on how, on how they do things around here. As an example, that the Everglades are number one people that said, you know what, we need a plan. So we sit down. We sit down and devise the Ever Development Master Plan. And I tell you guys again, that this is a public, public discussion public process, public discourse, and should never take it lightly that every one of us is, are here as a duty to perform and a duty to undertake.
My name is Tom Berg, and I've had the luxury to be a member of the Kai Law Advisory Team and the Rules Committee. Um, it was unfortunate that Ms. Maida Timson could have My goodness. Uh, Ms. Tesha Malama could not be here. I was hoping that she could be here because she wanted to advocate to all of us. And I can't speak for her. But I have a feeling if she was here. The North-South Road is, uh, this map was produced in January of 08. This just came out uh, to us in the Kyla Law Advisory Team. And this is the North-South Road to Keone Mula Boulevard. It's supposed to be a six-lane thoroughfare past Top of Lake Parkway, all the way down through to give us that connectivity we need. Just to let you know, the executive branch of our uh, uh, Governor Lingle's administration provided for millions of dollars in her budget to improve the roads in Calego. Our state legislature would not entertain it, would not put it in the budget. So the monies were there. We need to know these things when we're talking about implementation, that when, when our, 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 our uh, legislators and elected officials are trying to work in concert for our behalf. The North-South Road is not funded to go to Keoneula Boulevard. The North-South Road, in fact, is a six-lane thoroughfare, is only funded at three lanes out of the six lanes. The fourth lane is a shoulder lane. So we have a problem when we're talking about implementation that when we compare ourselves to what's going on in the mainland, they build 30 miles in a stretch. We can't even build a three-mile road. We're piecemealing our roads here. So when we talk about the grandioseness of this plan, when we have the fifth floor at the state capitol says, I got $50 million in my budget to fix the roads and bring them up to grade in Kalaloa. And our legislative body can't be in concert with each other. We all suffer. We have a problem at hand. So this document needs to be one that we all embrace we're in concert. That's what I want to get at, is in concert with each and every one of us. doesn't matter if you're pro-development or anti-development, but when the money's been appropriated, budgeted for, and it doesn't get hurt in another body of government, we're dysfunctional. And we need to know that. So there's be a chapter in here on dysfunctional. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else who wants to offer closing comments? Again, my name is Sharon Swain. I live on the top of the I'm actually the president of Model Highway Association. And first of all, I just want to thank you, uh, for the opportunity to comment and to review this event. But I really um, would like to speak to um, your comment on the Department of Government. Um, I cannot comment, and I don't know as much as you do, having lived in this area for 24 years. I've only lived in this area for seven years. But I can tell you personally what my experience with the Department of Government has been. And I can assure you and tell you that the, the Department, and especially Chairman Tom, confers with his beneficiaries. He comes to the leadership routinely. He has an open door policy. Um, well, you have your comments and let me make um, We do, he leaves it, he comes to, the, to our team leadership to apprise us of these kinds of projects. We view these commercial projects as the key that will provide more affordable homes for the employees. We're not giving our land we're thinking of our future. We're thinking of providing more affordable homes for these homes. We also look at the conveniences that this will provide us. We look at the education. We look at the, the opportunities for small business. What this department has shown us now is that we as Native Hawaiians have a voice, and he's taught us how to use it. So um, although we sit here quietly, we appear that we may not know everything that is going on here. We do know something And we have been apprised. And we have, we also looked at all of the information. We review all of these documents before we So yes, thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you. I wanted to also close to it, also respond to the comments that I made earlier by Glenn, that Waimanalo, 
what you're going through is what we've already done. Okay, we've worked with private owners, contractors, developers, everything like that. We went to the point where McDonald's wanted to build a big McDonald's and they said it's not appropriate for ours, keep it country, country. So they've scaled back. One of the very first McDonald's where they actually listened to the community and scaled back the development. Okay, so we've done that. In fact, we kind of set the model. We refused to build a four-lane highway that comes from Wanghao. We even refused to build a left turn. What happened? The residents decided to change, and now there's more appealing, more aloha when they drive to Wanghao. They'll stop. They'll let the person turn left. And as a result of that, we only got one stoplight. Okay? Everyone's refusing to put another stoplight because they don't want to see the community change. To the fact even where now if a building's going to come in, they don't want to see the building higher than the tree. Because when they come into Mon Mall, they want to see it. Now this is your Kuliana, it's your side. Okay? And that's why I said, you guys, whatever you do here affects us because all those people that settled here came from our place. And when they, there's a party, they're coming back to us complaining. I don't know what this is, this is. I said, well, you go back and you participate in your community. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the things. We agree with you on some of the stuff where EIS, but you have to partner, you have to work with whoever it's going to be. And that's where you have to give and take. It's not a compromise, it's what we call consensus. Thank you. Senator. Every 10 years since the uh, population has grown, and it's going to continue to grow. And in the next 25 years, we may have 300,000 people on this island. In the next 50 years, we could have 400 to 500,000 between residents. This process is a part of that master plan of local development. And I commend the city and everyone here who's working on it. We're all not going to agree. There are definitely differences from in certain areas. But uh, let me comment when someone says, well, at the state legislature, they didn't do this or they didn't do that. It's not as simple as that. Our side of the island has gotten a tremendous amount of attention in the last six to 10 years. We have had a tremendous amount of transportation monies coming to this side, probably more so than any other part of the state. And they have the same problems as we are on Hawaii, on Maui, on the Big Island. We are getting our fair share. And just because someone appropriated money and the legislature didn't fund it, it's not that simple. It's not that easy. <coughs> With even projects we have funded, though, we have funded hundreds of millions of dollars from last year in transportation infrastructure. We certainly need more. But the issue are the resources. We don't have the resources we need to do everything. But this type of planning is going to help the system. It helps us all to see what we can prioritize. And hopefully we do it right for ourselves and for our future generations. We may not like it, but then again, where are you going to put 300 to 500,000 people? And these are going to be our children and our grandchildren. This, one of the resources we did provide today is the city's most recent projections for water and broken down by individual need the areas. Anybody else have a comment? That fragmentation here is in. I personally would like to second um, Shirley's sentiments and. Uh, uh, I want to say, you know, on my personal behalf as a resident of this area, uh, I want to thank my developers, I want to thank my elected officials, my neighborhood board, both sides from the other side and also the Kapolei side, Mafakilo, and uh, all the other concerned citizens here in the room today. And I'd like to thank you, Bob, for organizing this in your department and uh, appreciate it. And, uh, Definitely be looking forward to furthering this process. So I really appreciate it, Mayor. Thank you very much for your comments and uh, your thoughts and your passions. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody else closing comments? One thing, one more. Then, I'm sorry, I'm to put you Okay, with that, what we're going to do is uh, call the formal part of the program to an end. Uh, we will be here for these.
15 minutes, 30 minutes. If you have questions, if you want to talk to us about anything, uh, or provide additional comments. You know, when uh, we started making my last comments, oh, this is going to be an announcement. <laughs> it is an announcement. When Mayor Harris had the vision team, and it fizzled out, and it was over with, there was a group photo. I'd be happy to have everybody stand up and do a group photo. I'll take a picture. Anybody wants to be in the group photo? Anybody want a group shot? Before you get put in the trash, Thank you. Oh, yeah, it's kind of cool. Thanks. You're with. I'm on the board.